Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to the, today's enrichment call. My name is Savia Ofori Wahupa, and I'm your MC for today. And it's my singular honor to introduce our facilitator for today, or we call it the presenter. She is the founder and operations manager of Alomek in Albania. She was trained as a primary school teacher and her passion is about children and teaching. Her name is Ruth Vegnon, and she has a master's degree in child protection and specializes in childhood trauma. She loves to facilitate training for those working with children at risk. She is married and serves together with her husband. Friends, let's use club emojis to welcome our presenter for today, Ruth Bergman. Thank you, Xavier, and uh, hello, everybody. I'm really glad to be with you uh, today, and uh, I'm really glad also to share about this important topic of topic of protecting and uh, safeguarding uh, our children. So please forgive my emotion. Uh, because I am not speaking in my own language, but I will try my best for you to understand uh, my English and to get a sense of uh, what we can do as a church, as a children ministry to really protect and safeguard our children. Uh, if ever you have questions during our time, don't hesitate to put the questions in the, in the chat and at the end we will have a, a question and an answer. But let's begin with, with a small story. Uh, so uh, the story will also appear in, the, in, the, in your screen, but I will read to you. This is a little story of, uh, about four people named everybody, somebody, anybody, and nobody. There was an important job somebody had to do, and it was everybody's job to make sure it got done. Anybody could have done it, but everybody thought somebody was doing it. So in the end, nobody did it. Everybody got angry when nobody did what somebody was supposed to have done. Everybody thought that anybody could do it, but nobody realized that anybody wasn't doing it. It ended up that everybody blamed somebody when nobody did, what anybody could have done. Funny story, but also sad story, isn't it? But it's also often our reality. Everybody blamed somebody when nobody did what anybody could have done. And this is even more painful when we talk about protecting children from harm and violence. So in our time together, uh, in order to avoid that, we will try to answer three questions. So first question, we will try to answer why is it important? Uh, why, is, why is child safeguarding important? And we will look at it through the lens of the scripture. Then we will try to answer the question, what can make children unsafe in our churches? Indeed, uh, being conscious of risks is the first step toward making sure that our churches are safe. And for sure, at the end, we will try to begin to answer how can we keep children safe? So let's begin with God's heart for keeping children safe. In the Bible, God reveals his heart for children. And this is the foundation for a Christian approach to keeping children safe. The most important things to grasp is that a Christian's attitude toward children should really reflect God's, Jesus' own attitude, and our action should reflect his character. Children are precious to God. And if we look at Psalm 139, uh, it reminds us how God creates each of us and each and every child uniquely uh, for he has created every child in most being and we can praise him that they are all 
fearfully and wonderfully made. So yes, we see how much God values children. We also see Jesus, how much he values children in Matthew 18, when he blessed them. So our work, our attitude, our actions must first of all, reflect this value for each and every individual child. Then we also see that God acts on behalf of the vulnerable. In Psalm 10, 10 we see that we are reminded that God is the protector of the weak. We see that he is the helper of the fatherless. But beyond that, we also see that he calls to account those who harm the powerless. Uh, we, we read, break the harm of the wicked man, call the evildoer to account for his wickedness. So what does it mean for us? Because of this, the way that God is caring for vulnerable children, God is also calling us to care, to protect, and to defend the most vulnerable. And also, we are to do all we can to see that children receive justice for the wrongs done to them. And then we also see that Jesus shows really seriously how seriously he takes the wrong done to children. In Luke 17, verse 2, we see that it would be better for him to be thrown into the sea with a milestone tied around his neck than for him, for you, for me, to cause one of these little ones to sin. Yeah, it is really important for us to realize that some people may pretend to be good, but can have evil intentions towards children. And then it's, it's also important as Christians working with children to also be for ourselves accountable for our actions with children. Because as we see in Hebrews 4, nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Yes, we also need to be accountable for our actions with children, protecting them and caring, ensuring that they are safe. So many good biblical reasons for us to take child safeguarding or child protection seriously, isn't it? So uh, first question, why is important to, uh, uh, why child safeguarding is important? We have seen it. Then um, let's see our second questions. What can make children unsafe? In fact, uh, uh, Ezekiel asks us, what makes you feel safe? We also need to think of this question, but what can make also children uh, uh, feel unsafe? Um, we will do a small exercise uh, where I will ask you to react. So I will read a number of statements and I will ask you to react to those statements. So you can react uh, two different ways. You can react through the chat or with reactions. So we, you have three ways to react. Or you agree with the statement, or you disagree, or maybe you are not sure. So you can use whatever you, uh, you, you want. And I will read the statements one after uh, the others. I just want to recall you that uh, this is not a true or false exercise. It's really a way for you to express your own views. So I will not say this is right, this is not right. This is just for you to express your own views. So let's begin with the first stat statement. Eating children is always wrong and is a form of child abuse. So do you agree, disagree, or you are not sure? If you can choose, yes, thanks, Jonathan. You react, or you can react also in the chat. Agree, disagree, or not sure. Sexual abuse of children is not a problem in my country. 
agree, disagree, or not sure. Uh huh. Using a stick as a way of disciplining children in school is okay. Agree, disagree, not sure. Reporting abuse is likely to make things worse for the child, so it is better not to do or say anything. Children with special needs are more at risk of being abused than other children. Agree, disagree, not sure. Staff employed to work with children are unlikely to abuse them. Agree, disagree. Children often make up stories about being abused. Boys are less likely to be sexually abused than girls. A faith leader would never abuse a child. Only men abuse children. Women are safer. As I said, this exercise was not to say what is right or wrong. Uh, depending on our context, depending on our experiences, depending on uh, a lot of uh, a lot of factors, we may have answered differently the the questions. In fact, uh, the understanding of what constitutes child abuse, maltreatment, neglect can vary from one society to the other. We all use our own experiences. We all use our own values, our own perspectives when making judgment about abusive behavior. So trying to define child abuse as a world phenomenon is really difficult. What may seem abusive in one country or in one context may be acceptable in another one. So you would you will you you can say me, but what is abuse then? There are some definitions that have been worked on that in some ways we can count on. We can just base our understanding of what is abuse. And uh, one definition has been done by the World Report on Violence and Health. And the this definition is this one. Child abuse and neglect or child maltreatment is all forms of physical and or emotional ill treatment. Sexual abuse, neglect, or negligent treatment, treatment, or commercial or other exploitation, resulting in actual or potential harm to the child's health, survival, development, or dignity in the context of a relationship of responsibility, trust, or power three different points that are really essential in this definition is that child abuse can take different forms. I'm sure that you are aware of different forms. And when I, I'm talking about different forms of abuse, uh, some are coming to your mind, like physical abuse, emotional abuse, or psychological abuse, spiritual abuse, sexual abuse, neglect, exploitation that can be commercial, or sexual, peer-to-peer -peer abuse, or what is called differently child-to-child -child abuse, and even digital abuse. Uh, you will be sent, you will receive in your email after the call uh, some handouts, and in the handouts you can find the definitions that uh, for those different forms of abuse. So this is important, understanding that child abuse can take different forms. Then what is also important is that uh, abuse can result in actual or potential harm. It can have an impact, immediate impact on the child or a long-term impact in the child's health, survival, or even dignity and development. 
And the last point that is important when we talk about child abuse, it is done in a context of a relationship of responsibility, trust or power, which means in a context of the family, in the context of the school, teacher with children, in context of the church, leader of a church, leader of a ministry, because we have this relationship, both of responsibility, trust and power. So this definition can just help us to better understand what is child abuse. But um, I think it is also important to mention that child abuse can even happen within our churches, within our children's ministry. Never let your own assumptions about church and people of faith put children at risk. Sometimes we may say, no, children are safe because we are Christians, because we are uh, workers, we have a heart for children. No, never let your assumptions put a child at risk. So I have talked a lot and I would like now to give you a little bit of space to uh, talk. So we will uh, go into, we will go into breakout rooms and um, I will ask you to think a little bit in your breakout rooms to think about what are the risks of abuse or harm that children might be exposed to in the church. So that, that means that you can think in terms of how can people that have access uh, to children in our church can put our children at risk. For example, uh, I give you an example. I have a new volunteer coming and I see that this volunteer uh, does not know really the context and is having inappropriate physical proximity with children, is putting children at risk of maybe sexual abuse. So we, you will think also in terms of the way you are doing activities with children, how the way that I am doing activities can put children at risk. For example, uh, one example, I don't have enough staff uh, for a big group of children. Then this might be a risk that children may uh, hurt each other and I can't control that. So this is a risk. And then the last uh, point that you can think of is the way you are communicating with and about children, how this can put children at risk. Uh, and another example I can give you is that uh, in social media, you are putting personal information of children. And this makes that they are uh, potential, uh, they are, you give the access to predators to your uh, children. So uh, we will, you will have five minutes in your group. It's a short time, so be uh, conscious of time. Uh, but think what could be the risk that children are exposed to because of people, it can be volunteers, staff, visitors in the church, uh, because of the way you are doing activities and also the way you are communicating with and about children. You have, yes, Nancy, would you like to begin? Sure, um, we had um, sometimes children, I'm just gonna pick a couple of them, who yeah. are not, not church children can come into the church and bring a bad influence to the other children. And they might even be abusive toward the other children. So we need to be watching what's happening and aware of it, especially if we're doing outreach and bringing those kids in. Mm -hmm. um, and another is that leaders who are not trained might not know ways that aren't physical to discipline children. So they end up doing the thing that comes yeah. quicker rather than knowing the careful way to do it. So there are two. Yeah, thanks, Nancy, great inputs. I think I, I can go ahead and share. Yeah. Yes. Yes, uh, in our group, group four, we say that uh, when, when um, the teachers, uh, the church leaders accept that any person goes to children's ministry without looking uh, to his or her background and to know his behaviors, it can mm -hmm. expose it can expose children to uh, abuse. And also 
uh, sometimes we have teachers who are uh, not trained uh, on managing children behavior, children's behaviors and at that time they can abuse children. And uh, there are those ones who can use like uh, even uh, the stick to discipline, to discipline children or use bad words to them. Uh, another thing is when we say that there is a time when uh, there is uh, not enough teachers and one teacher is uh, uh, has a group of like 50 or plus. Uh, we used to have like a, one teacher in 200 children and sometimes some children can go away, younger ones, and they may be exposed to abuse. They may uh, jump high and uh, be, uh, maybe they can break their, their, their legs and so on. Yeah. Thank you, Isaac, yes. That does mean, yeah, good. Uh, Jonathan? Yes, our group had a, a few comments that were already mentioned, um, like um, equipping the teachers well. That was also mentioned in our group. Um, some additional comments that were mentioned in our group was, uh, if the church goes late and the children are released from Sunday school early, they might mm -hmm. cross uh, through some areas that they may be exposed to harm. So that's a risk. Then uh, some parents, uh, some, some children's workers actually build really good relationships with parents and are well liked by people in the church. But there's an alternative motive behind where they actually are trying to gain access to children and build the trust with the parents in order to do that. And so we identified that background checks, checks and screening mm -hmm. um, is very mm -hmm. important, as well as providing a code of conduct and having a good uh, policy uh, with expectations as to what is uh, what is acceptable behavior for the parents or for the children's workers and the children. We will come back a little bit later on on the way to mitigate the risk, but thank you all, Jonathan, for the good inputs. Okay, uh, from from group three. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just share some because others have been uh, uh, told already. One. If there's a traumatized uh, volunteer teacher or guide, it might spill over towards the, the children. And another thing is that if the church would have a, an activity outside, like for example, in a forest area or mm -hmm. definitely outside the church, the church people must have an, enough teachers or guide uh, for the children. That they be certain and sure that the area that they'll be going to or be using outside is all, also a safe place. Yeah. So the, those others have been shared already by, by other groups. Thanks, Phil. Maybe Nancy, your last thoughts if you want to add. Um, we had two that weren't mentioned. One is that if you have children coming in from outside who aren't dressed well because they're poor that that can traumatize them if they're made fun of by the people in the church mm -hmm. or by mm -hmm. the other children. And the other is that when you do activities with the children, sometimes you give them things to do, like you might do a skit and have them, you're the husband, you're the wife. And those things can be really stressful to the children because they get picked on about it after. So just even the interactions you're doing, you have to be careful it's appropriate for the kids. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for all the group. You did good, good inputs. Maybe just as a kind of wrap up, another way of putting the different areas of risk that as a church, as a children ministry, we need to think of. So uh, the first thing it has been mentioned a lot is to ensure that the premises where you are doing the activities, it can be inside the church, but also outside are safe enough and that the activities are safe. So that means in terms of supervision that you have uh, uh, mentioned. So lack of supervision can be put uh, children at risk. And also the kind of activities that we are choosing, depending on the age of the child, but also depending on what you are using and also on depending on the children. Some children can be really, can have the tendency to become easily violent. So being mindful on what kind of activities we choose considering the children we have. 
Then another area of risk can be that we give easy access to children to people that may be predators. So it has been mentioned that uh, sometimes we can have volunteers that are unchecked and maybe they are not here. They, they are like a wolf with a sheep uh, disguise. So need, uh, uh, not checking volunteers or staff is can be put children at, ri at risk. Also giving access to visitors, people in the church that we don't know can put children uh, at risk. And also social media. If we are uh, talking about children with details, we can give access to predators. Then another area of risk that we, you mentioned a lot is the behavior of staff or volunteers. If we have staff of volunteers that are not trained, that not, don't know how to discipline children, they can use harsh discipline or punishment. They may have uh, uh, bond, touch boundaries that are not appropriate, or they can even uh, have, uh, do spiritual abuse over children. So untrained, unchecked uh, staff and volunteers can behave in the wrong way and can abuse children. Then around communication about children, uh, it is important also the way that we are portraying children in our social media. If you are so using social media, uh, sometimes the tendency is we are portraying children to attract the pity of donors. Uh, or things like that, that it's an abuse in itself on uh, children. Then you mentioned a lot child to child abuse. We know that children can be mean with each other. So being, being mindful of what we are doing and being mindful to, uh, to understand what are the dynamics between children. And then the last thing that maybe was not mentioned, an area of risk is that we are not clear as a church how to report abuse. There is an abuse. We come to know that a child is abused and we just say silence. Maybe because we are afraid of reporting, maybe because we don't know how to uh, report. But this is also an area of risk because if we keep silent, then the abuse will not stop. So this is also an important area of risk. Now that we see the area of risk, for sure, what we want to do is we want to mini mitigate the risks. The risk can be still be there, but we want to mitigate them. And we want to think practically of ways to keep children safe. And this is what is called really child safeguarding. So what is child safeguarding? Child safeguarding is the responsibility that churches have to make sure their staff, volunteers, operations and activities do no harm to children and they do not expose children to the risk of harm. So two sides, we don't do harm and we do not expose children to, to harm. And this is more a prevention uh, a child safeguarding as a part of we prevent harm to children, but there is uh, also a side of responding to abuse, and uh, that's why ch child safeguarding is that any concerns that the church has about children's safety are reported to the appropriate authorities or agency. So this is what we want to uh, to do. So in other words, it means that as a church or as a ministry, we make sure that the way we are doing ministry is not harmful to children. And this can be done through establishing processes and good practices. In our group, we begin to uh, mention some ideas, but I would like that together as a group, we may uh, think of some concrete ideas of how can we reduce the risk of harm? So thinking of what we have said, the, the list of risks that there are, what can be some easy, simple ideas that we can put in place to make sure that uh, the risk of easy access to children, for example, is avoided. So I would like maybe just, uh, you can unmute or you can use the chat to give some ideas to prevent uh, this harm 
to children. Having background check on volunteers. Having a minimum of two people working with a group of children. Yes, great ideas. Checking the background of the volunteers. Yeah, check background of volunteers. We check, we may ask a recommendation from someone we personally know, or we can also ask a legal uh, check background. Proper tra training of volunteers. A code of conduct, yes, that volunteers have to sign. Re write rules and distribute in the congregation. Yes, not only uh, the rules on behavior toward children, not only for the children's uh, leader, but also to the congregation. A policy, a ministry policy. Mm -hmm. Any other ideas? I think also training children themselves on how to take precautions. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, training, a lot of training and different, uh, different aspects. Training on what is child abuse, training on how to discipline children in a way that is respectful to children. Uh, room for classes should have window. So checking the environment where we are doing uh, the, the activities. Let me check. Encourage children to openly report kids who do bad. Yeah, it's good to avoid child-to-child -child abuse. Good communication uh, channels. Using technology like cameras in the rooms, especially in the big cities. Yeah, having rules on how we use uh, technology. Having rules also who takes photos, who publish photos and what kind of photos. Uh, how do we do that? Teach the kids what abuse mean. Yes, also uh, teaching ki kids about abuse. Teaching kids how, how to report abuse. Mm -hmm. Also, we need to have a child protection policy. We are by mm -hmm. everybody's time and agree to the policy. Yes, yeah. A policy that is not only a written document, but that everyone is aware of the policy. And in the policy, mentioning all everything that you have mentioned here. Uh -huh. I think also I wanted to say mm -hmm. once to know the, the children policy on one side, maybe for the caregiver or the volunteers, but also it's good to train children to know their boundaries because yes. if there are children mm -hmm. that maybe uh, all youth or adults or some children can understand how to respect and keep the boundaries from the adult people so that they can protect also themselves. Because if there is no one who can speak for them, also they can be able to protect themselves if they, they have been taught about their right and how they can keep their self safe. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's true that training uh, leaders, but also training our uh, children or making them aware of what is appropriate and not appropriate and how they can uh, protect themselves. Yeah. Maybe just I'm conscious also of time. Uh, so uh, I will just go uh, through some key elements that you can put in place. And all these elements should be included in a child protection policy. So, uh, and should be, uh, you should develop some processes uh, regarding this. So in terms of safety of premises and environment, maybe uh, doing a risk assessment before to do an activity, just evaluate it. What are the risks and how can we mitigate the risk? Like, uh, okay, is the, a place where we have children safe for them in terms of people that are coming in and out, in terms of is there something that can harm children in the room? Uh, is there activities that I am doing? Are there putting children at risk? Uh, thinking in terms of supervision, supervision levels. In every context, this may change, but really thinking, how can we do in our small group? Someone mentioned that uh, when the, there is only one leader, they are uh, asking older kids to help uh, when uh, to help with uh, looking after children. So 
this is uh, some uh, an important point. Also, something that is important is collecting essential information. I don't know if you are doing camps, but maybe if you are doing camps, it's important to ask, do uh, some children have allergy? Because if uh, there is something happening, you know that, okay, this child is allergic to maybe milk or to bees. So you need to be careful about that, that you don't have accident or also having a direct contact with the parents that something is happening. We know that we can ask directly the, the, the parents. Another uh, part that is really important, and I think we have talked a lot during our discussion, is uh, in link to behavior around children. Make sure that the people that we recruit or we accept as volunteers, and here, uh, keep in mind also people that may uh, teams that may coming from a missionary trip. It's not because they are coming uh, from another church that they are good uh, with good intentions. So do a screening of people that are coming and that interacting with your children, and think about training. Uh, we mentioned that. Uh, Sometimes also something that we don't think of is visitors. We have someone that is coming. He will not directly uh, directly uh, interact with children, but is around and he may not be supervised and it can be put a child at risk. We mentioned a code of conduct. So there are different code of conduct that you can find on the internet. What are the things that a leader can do and cannot do with uh, children and also maybe uh, teaching positive discipline strategies to uh, workers or uh, volunteers. Then around uh, media and communication, I think it is important to have a clear policy of what kind of photos we post, what kind of information we share or we share not, who can share or not. Personally, as an organization, we are asking that no volunteers, no workers share photos on internet of children. Only uh, the a church can share and then volunteers can share what the church has shared because we know, do we have the consent of the parents? Do we have the consent of the child? Is the way that we are doing uh, the, the communication, is it respecting the dignity of the child or not? And please, no, identifi no identifying information uh, on the on internet, because this is a way that people, predators, groom children. So it's really important, and also to take to talk about that with uh, with your volunteers. And the last thing that is really important is also to uh, help children and people working to, with children to know how to respond to abuse. So helping children to know what they can do to protect themselves, but also to report if something wrong has been done to them and to create this safe environment where they can do it. And also as a church, prepare and implement a reporting procedure. So how do you do? You want to avoid that if a child is abused, that the word is going in all the congregation. Everyone knows that this child has been abused. No, we don't want that. So we need to know if a child has been abused, who should I talk to? And then as a leader of the church, who should I talk to? That we make sure that the child is protecting. So I know that it's a lot of uh, information and in the same time, there is so much more to, to, to look at. But I think that uh, these elements are really elements that need to, put, to be put in place step by step in our churches, in our ministries, to keep children, uh, children safe. And uh, every organization or church that has any contact with children should have a child protection policy. Many of you have mentioned it. Yes, it is important. And it's not a policy that is just signed, but it's really a guide for uh, every leaders, every volunteers to make sure that they are together to uh, protect children.
but also it's important it's not because you have a child protection policy that uh, every child will be protected but it's a step toward keeping children uh, children safe no child protection policy can keep children totally safe but it will help and having a good child pro protection policy will help children by minimizing the risk of abuse and exploitation. It will help also protect workers by providing clear guidelines for appropriate behavior and clear procedures for responding to concerns or allegations. It will also help protect your organizations or church from infiltration by potential abusers. And also, it can really help protect your organization or church from the damage that can be caused by allegations of abuse. So it's protecting the children and protecting the church all, uh, all together. So just uh, to help you with uh, establishing, preparing, or completing uh, uh, child protection policy, uh, here you have some links, but we will also you will also find those links in uh, in your uh, handouts. So uh, you have um, some are from Christian organizations that have worked a lot on uh, child safeguarding in churches and in children ministry, like Viva's resources, but also thirty one eight. Uh, is a ministry that is specialized on child safeguarding for churches. And then there is a secular organization that has been developing a lot of materials. And there is a guide on how you can develop your own child safeguarding policy. So I strongly recommend that you begin the process of developing or you review your child protection policy regularly to make sure that children are safe in your midst. I hope it has been helpful for you, uh, the time together, and uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you for also uh, your feedbacks and, uh, and uh, your, uh, your, your ideas. And now, if you have maybe some questions, yeah, I was just little, we are in French speaking countries. For example, I am in Guinea. Guinea is a French speaking country. And the mm -hmm. church is not, it's a Muslim country. Practically 90% of the population is Muslim. And also um, the church is not as, as strong like as most, some of the churches in the English speaking countries in West Africa. So I was just thinking, how can we have this program to benefit our French speaking uh, leaders who are working with, uh, with uh, children uh, in these French speaking countries, especially here in Guinea. We don't have uh, trainings like this uh, or something like this. So how can we maybe try to help and have them uh, to be part of it? That's my question. So Jonathan, uh, thank you. I'm French, so maybe it could be an opportunity to maybe do the same in French. I would be happy to discuss it and uh, maybe do the same in French. In the training we have raised about the positive disciplining. Uh, what is that? How can we discipline? What is the, the positive disciplining means all about? If you have detail and knowledge, I want to understand in detail. Uh, so uh, positive discipline is how to use discipline to still put boundaries to children, but in a way that is not uh, um, like putting them at risk of uh, abuse. Uh, I think that it's a whole subject uh, to be discussed. Uh, I think that in the VIVAS document, you have a specific chapter on positive discipline. So you can yes. use it, you can use it, uh, you can refer to it. Okay. Can I get it really from the VIVA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's available on the website free of charge. It's just it's Good. a PDF that you can uh, download. Good. Thank you.
Milton had a question that was uh, in the chat that's sort of related to that. How do we apply Proverbs 13, verse 24, about not sparing a rod without abusing children? This is a really spicy question. I think that this comes also a lot around uh, what we say at the beginning, that uh, the definition of child abuse is not easy to define depending on the concept. So I think that uh, this is something that uh, needs to be discussed as a team. I think it's not something that I can give you the answer. I think that every family needs to discuss it within the family. And uh, as a team, it's also something that needs to be discussed. Uh, my uh, personal point of view as an organization is that we are not allowing uh, uh, children workers to use physical punishment to children. Well, um, I don't know whether I can try to respond to that. Um, I, I think the part of using the rod to discipline the child is majorly, according to the Bible, rested on the parent, not in an organization, not in the church. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's a method of parenting, a method of disciple, uh, disciplining the child in the, in the family. Because most of it, uh, where the Bible have used the rod, it is when it is instructing parents on how to discipline their children. And also in that, there's the way that the parent is instructed on how to use the rod, but not in an institute. Thank you, everyone. I think my time is done. So I will give the floor to Savior for the next part. Thank, thank you, you everyone thank you thank you Ruth. i've learned so much and i'm going to chew on this for a long time and i hope all of you have picked one or two to also make sure the children within our influence are kept safe within our watch and our watch as an organization even in our homes we need to keep our children safe thank you very much Ruth, for this insight and um, I will invite Jonathan to share with us some information he has for us, and we will take it up from him. Thank you, Xavier. And Ruth, thank you so much for this incredible presentation. This is such a big deal, big issue in our world today. And we see the way that Jesus loved children, and we want our children in our communities to grow up in a safe environment. So this is something that Jesus was really passionate about, and we're really passionate about this. So um, our organization, my organization is World Venture, and they created a three, uh, three sections of a training to equip children to be able to have the voice to be able to respond if they're ever in a situation that is making them feel uncomfortable or if they're being abused or something, but empowering children to really be able to participate in helping to build this culture of safety. So we are developing this child safety training uh, within our mission. And it is finished. It's been uh, presented in a few of our different contexts. It is in the state right now where it's in draft format. You could say it's a pilot version. And I'm sharing this with you now just because it's so relevant to everything that Ruth just shared with us. If this is something that you would like to pilot in your ministry before it's available on the website, we have the World Venture version of it. Uh, we're still working and tweaking some of it, adding some front matter and some items in the appendix. But ultimately, the, the lessons for these three age groups of kids are done. Uh, please email us and let us know if this is something that you would like to go ahead and pilot. Once we get this up and running and, um, and more official, we will for sure make it available on the website. But uh, we did want to mention that to you now, uh, just because it's so relevant to Ruth's uh, presentation. We also have two videos on our YouTube channel that just went live. I'll put the links in the chat here that are also along the same theme as Ruth has just shared. The statistics of child abuse, as well as the theology of child abuse. These were two presenters from my mission, World Venture, that presented this information. But if you would like more information and to dig a little bit deeper into what Ruth has shared with us today, these are some great places to start. Great, Jonathan. Thanks. This is so wonderful. And I want to encourage all of us 
to have a look at this and also help with capacity in our churches, communities, and our organization. Thank you all for giving us one hour of your time. It's not easy to be online for one hour. We are so grateful that you spend this time with us. And most especially to our presenter, Ruth, for giving us all those insights. We are grateful and we hope you come back another time to continue from where you've left off. And I'll also uh, thank um, Ezekiah and Jenny for running the tech. They were the brain behind the scenes, admitting all of us and handling all the technical issues. God bless you.